I received a review sample of the Microsoft Surface Book 3 10 days ago. I turned off my desktop and fully switched to the Surface Book. In this review, I'll talk about the experience. The first thing I noticed with the Surface Book 3 was the build quality. It's better than even MacBooks in my opinion. The design is minimalistic, almost making this very special device look like a generic laptop you'd find in some low resolution game. I have the 15 inch version and it's big. Sure, the tablet part is very thin and has as small a bezel as you want on a tablet, but the keyboard section is pretty bulky. It doesn't look thick, but that's because the sides are curved. The bottom edge isn't, it's a fairly sharp edge that gets pretty uncomfortable when typing on your lap. It's much better on a desk. I really like typing on this keyboard because it's large enough, uses a fairly standard layout except for the arrow keys, and the keys have enough travel. I could type blindly and mostly error-free within minutes. The trackpad is also pretty good, albeit tiny compared to modern Ultrabooks. The biggest recurring downside to this device is the heat it creates. The lower half holds the battery and an NVIDIA GTX 1660 Ti Max-Q. Its cooling intake and exhaust are in front of the display. Now the bottom of the Surface Book gets uncomfortably hot when under long sustained loads, slow cooking your private parts in the process. Where the thermals really get silly is the tablet portion. The Intel Core i7 1065G7 runs at up to 3.9 GHz. Notice the up to part. Under a sustained load, clocks drop down to 1.8 or half the GHz with CPU temps over 100 degrees Celsius. This can't possibly be good for longevity and again makes this part of the laptop uncomfortable to hold. Now this heat problem is under long max loads only. Under normal web browsing, watching videos or even light productivity, the device is silent and cool to the touch. But you don't spend this amount of money on a device only to use it as a 500 euro laptop. The Surface Book 3 has a gorgeous display that works beautifully with the Surface Pen. I imagine this is great for creative professionals. Working in Photoshop or sketching is a true joy. Sadly, the thermal situation limits the fun when video editing and the same goes for 3D renders. IO on the other hand is pretty good. You get dual USB ports on the left along with an SD card reader. On the right you have the Type-C port which is also your only display out port and this is also where you'll find the surface connector. This is a magnetic connector that detaches when the cable gets pulled. Without this connector my own Surface Pro 3 would not have lasted as long as it has already. The only problem here is that the display output cable will be right next to your mouse if you are right-handed. We've made it quite far into this review without talking about the Surface Book's party trick, the separation of the two halves. At the press of a button, the tablet detaches from the keyboard and more importantly, the GPU. This is great when you just want to read some stuff online, do some shopping, edit portrait images or just show what you're working on to someone else without having to carry the entire laptop with you. To enable this, Microsoft had to make a pretty funky hinge and honestly, I don't know if it was worth it. Sure, it's rigid in all positions with very little screen wobble, but the range is limited and it adds a lot of thickness when folded. By now, you probably don't think I like the Surface Book very much as I gave at least one negative for each positive. But the opposite is true. I really enjoyed my time on this device. I played lots of games on it and it did well. Typing this review went well and editing this video was great on a display this good looking, except for the rendering of course, which took ages. The reason? I got to borrow it for this review. Had I spent 2700 euros of my own money on it, my conclusion would probably be different. I can forgive all the little shortcomings I mentioned, but one thing is downright insulting to me. 237 gigabytes of storage. 237 gigabytes on a device aimed at creative people. You know, those who have thousands of pictures, videos, drawings, 3D models and god knows what. I have video projects where the B-roll alone is more than 237 gigabytes. Now the price between a 250 and a 1 terabyte SSD in the same model range is around 100 euros retail, so less for manufacturers. But it's not like you can easily upgrade the storage yourself. And while the Wi-Fi chip is pretty good, you will need the additional Surface Dock if you want to work off of a NAS over Ethernet or connect more than one display. 
The Surface Book 3 is an amazing piece of technology, which hopefully will inspire other manufacturers to make similar products just like the original Surface Pro did. It gets a lot of things right, like the great webcam, build quality, great battery life and beautiful display, but I personally can't justify the cost of a device like this for the specs you get.